Two of the most important companies in the world of AI agents have just come out and released their secrets on exactly how they built their agentic products. Those two companies are Cognition Labs, who built Devin, the AI software engineer, and Anthropic, who've built Claude, and in particular, Claude's deep research product. Now, both of these are agentic systems using multiple agents, but both of them use very different approaches. Now, in the last couple of weeks, they've come out and written articles explaining exactly how they built these agents. What's interesting is that they both talk about two very different approaches and on a surface level the Cognition Labs approach actually contradicts exactly what Anthropic says. They actually propose that you should not build multi-agents at all. Now I'm going to give a bit of a spoiler alert that when you get into these two different approaches they're actually saying the same things in very different ways and effectively they just have two different approaches to building agents and the main reason that they have different approaches is because the agents do different things. However, there are some very interesting insights that both of these approaches can teach us. And that's what we're gonna unpack today. If you're new to the channel, my name is Alfie Marsh. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Toolflow AI. We're a company that helps you build your own digital workforce of AI agents without a single line of code. And we also help build custom agents for your business. So if you have a project where you'd like us to build some agents, drop us a message by clicking on the link in the description below. And with that being said, let's get into the video. Let's start with Cognition Labs. So this is the one that's the most controversial. So let's start with this first. They basically propose that you shouldn't build multi-agents. And for context, this is really controversial right now because everybody is going around the internet talking about how multi-agent systems are the new thing. And there's a lot of hype around them. So for a big company in this space to come out and say, hey, don't build that, it's kind of interesting. Now, they talk about a couple of different things here. And if you want to read this paper, by all means, there'll be a link to it below. But we're going to go through and just extract the most important parts. So first of all, they talk about context engineering. Then they go on to talk about the theory of building long running agents. And this is actually where most of the meat of the interesting stuff is. They go through some diagrams to talk about good ways and bad ways to do things. And they kind of finish up and just uh, give you some examples exactly how these you know different agents could be applied. So this is the first one here. Then in the second paper, this is from Anthropic, and it's how we built our multi-agent research system. Now they have a slightly different approach. They give you some more kind of uh, high level theory behind some stuff and the benefits of multi-agent systems. We can kind of skip through a lot of this and get straight into the architecture. So they give a very high High level overview as to how they built their agents and effectively you know if you look at some of these diagrams they both work in a very similar way they kind of start off with this idea of a lead agent orchestrator and then go off and give these sub agents tasks and then they finish those tasks and kind of come back to this lead orchestrator. And this method of having a task and breaking it down into lots of different tasks has become a new kind of standard really in the agent building space. Um, and we're going to go into this in a little bit more detail in a second, but let's jump, jump over to Cognition and say, why do they not advise building these multi-agent systems? So they first start with context engineering. So a very brief overview of what this is, you may be familiar with prompt engineering. So prompt engineering is really this process of when you type a message to a chatbot, it's this idea that you can improve that message or that request. And the more that you change that prompt and improve it, the better the result you're going to get. And there's a whole kind of framework around how to do good prompt engineering. In fact, there are multiple guides from these companies. Uh, Google has a guide, Anthropic has a guide, OpenAI has a guide. And again, we can share some of the those below. So context engineering, however, is really the step above this. It goes into this kind of context of, okay, there's lots of different ways to provide context to these agents. Uh, and so yes, there is the prompt that the agent gets from the user. But behind the scenes, there's this thing called a system prompt. These kind of instructions that happen at a, a higher level. And there's ways to manipulate this system prompt. And this is things like, how would you like the agent to speak to the user? How would it process certain types of information? And the idea of context engineering is how do we dynamically update, change or manipulate this kind of context? Not only do the system prompt needs to be uh, changed or ma manipulated here, but there's other things such as the context history of the conversation that kind of just gets appended to the agent messages. And so how do we manage that knowing that we have context windows that are getting smaller? And how do we manage that chat? history of what's happened historically with the agent when we have a limitation of context window limit. There's all these sorts of things go into context engineering. And the reason Cognition Labs brings this up right here is because the limitations in some of the context engineering is 
directly going to impact which type of agent system you should build. Now, this is where the meat of the kind of approaches in the theory of building long running agents. This is quite an important context here because we're very used to speaking to a chat interface, asking a question and getting an answer. But we're moving to this new type of work where we can ask a question and it's actually not a question. We might give a entire task and this task can be broken down into lots of subtasks and it might take, you know, minutes, hours, days, maybe even weeks for someone to actually uh, go and do all of these tasks and come back and finish it. So we're going into this world of long running agentic tasks. And really, this is where the kind of world of digital workers is going to take off. Now, the example that they give here is to explain that first, we have an approach which is less efficient. And this is the approach of using multiple agents and breaking them down and saying, here's a task, I'm going to sub break that task. So here they give a diagram of a multi agent system. And they basically say that this is an inefficient system, they start with this core agent at the top, which they get the task probably from the user in this case, and that might be through some sort of chat interface, uh, then that lead agent, which is very similar to the one that we saw over on Anthropics paper, will then break down the task into subtasks, and it will allocate a different task to a different sub agent. Once all those different sub agents have gone and figured out the answer or done some work, then there's the agent that will bring it all back together at the end and then give the result to the user. So this is one methodology for creating multi agent systems. Now they basically explain that this system doesn't work very well because of this idea of context engineering. So let they give an example, let's suppose that you are an engineer building a flappy birds game, and you're trying to create a clone of this game, you might first start out and say, Okay, build the game. And that lead orchestrator agent will break this down into two tasks. One task might be to build the bird. And then the other task might be to build the background. So it would go down and give these two separate tasks to these sub agents and they go off and do some work. They give the example here that basically what happens if the first agent mistook your instructions and started building the background to Super Mario Bros and sub agent two, instead of building just the bird, it doesn't look like the asset. And maybe it's something like a photorealistic bird. So they're completely, you know, incorrect, because both of these subtasks have done something very different. When you bring this all together at the end in this kind a final step, you're bringing this merging this mix of messed up tasks that don't really relate to one another and trying to create something of value. And this is where this kind of multi agent system really falls down. Now they, they point out that this may be a contrived example, but actually most real world tasks have lots of different nuances to them, you can ask an employee to go and build a report for the comparison of competitors and do some SEO analysis. But there's lots of kind of nuances in those decisions, how should it be formatted? What kind of information are you looking at? Which website should you look? Are you caring about the blog or the main the main page? All these different things. So if these subtasks go off and do these things independently without having the context of what the others are doing, then that can create a bit of an issue. And this leads us to principle one, which is share context, share the full agent traces, not just individual messages, you need to be able to have the sub agents have a full context of everything that's happened within the system. And so <clears throat> here we come down and we see that how the first context of the main lead agent gets passed down into the sub agent one here and sub agent agent here, and then it gets passed into the uh, all of those historical ones into the, the, the final one that combines the results, they go on to explain that whilst this is better, it's still not perfect. And the reason being is although you still had the same context, you don't necessarily know exactly what the other agents have done. And so you don't have this full context. And they're basically saying here that it's good to know the previous conversation it's good to know the previous conversation history. But if you don't know what the other agents are doing, that might directly impact what you do, then you might have some issues. And they kind of give the example that perhaps the different styles of the assets are different and ones in green and ones in red, and they don't match. Because again, there's some historical context of the conversation, but there's no sideway kind of parallel conversation that's happening. And it goes on to principle two, which is actions carry implicit decisions and conflicting decisions can carry bad results. And it's 
basically just saying that when each of those agents make the decisions of what style to produce those assets in, they are implicit. They're kind of in the model itself. And it's not been explicitly stated based on, okay, the bird is going to be this color. So the background needs to be this color. And so when you combine this, they basically get to the crux of their point. They're saying that you shouldn't build these multi agents. You should build one agent which has one key thread. This is where I think this paper is the most misleading. They're not actually saying to build not multi agent systems. There are multiple agents in this system. But what they're saying is that they shouldn't be going off and doing different things with different threads of information. It should be one sequential list of tasks that happen one after the other, and they all take in the context of the thing that's happened before. And so you notice in this diagram here, it's basically the same thing, except it happens in a sequential thread rather than the one before, which can have two things happen in parallel. So really, they should retitle this paper and say, don't build paralyzed agentic systems, which is obviously not as good or catchy. Um, but they're not saying to not have multiple agents. They're just saying don't have multiple agents do things at the same time. They then go on to explain that there are some issues with this method, which is context windows. So we know that there are context window limits in terms of, let's say, 200 tokens for Claude's models, which means you only have a certain number of contexts that can keep getting passed down before we run out of space. They do offer some kind of ways to manage this, which is to compress the context window and the history of all of these conversations and decisions and actions that have happened and, and basically methodically summarize the history between them. And they, they go on and say that this is actually a very difficult challenge and you have to have lots of decisions about what information is important to keep and so on. But they basically just say that with context windows getting bigger and bigger, for most tasks, this is actually a really sufficient way even if you don't compress the contextual history uh, from each agent to the next. And that's pretty much it. So what this paper is basically saying is if your agent system has any level of dependency on what other tasks are doing, then having a multi-agent system that can do parallel tasks is not good. It needs that context one after the other. And in particular, for you got to bear in mind the context here, Cognition is building an AI software engineer. So they do have a lot of dependent tasks that rely on one another. So it makes total sense that they recommend this. On the other hand, if we go over to Anthropic now, they talk about their multi-agent research system. And so if you haven't seen Anthropic's deep research, it basically looks like in their chat, you ask a question and it will go off and do a bunch of research, researching different queries in Google, searching that, scraping that and building together a research report for you. And they effectively do propose that you should build multiple agents and they do suggest that working in parallel is actually a good thing. So let's get right into it. Their version looks somewhat similar to the version that Cognition said to not do, which is to build a you know lead agent orchestrator. And this in this case is to take in the user's query and it's gonna understand it, build a research plan, and then it will go and create a to-do list of tasks and allocate those or delegate those to different sub agents. And then it kind of brings it all back together and then puts it into a report and sends that back to the user. So the key thing here is they do suggest to use paralyzed agents that do things at the same time. So why the big difference? The main thing here is the fact that deep research has lots of tasks that can work independently of one another. When you think about it, lots of tasks, for example, let's say go and research all of the top 100 CEOs of the uh, S&P 100 and tell me what their yearly salaries were. That, that doesn't really require to you to wait on the result of one CEO to get the next one. You could actually create 100 different search terms all at the same time in parallel and then get those answers and then put them together and get an answer uh, in a research report. So that parallelization can save a lot of time. But the key thing is there is the interdependency of those tasks. Unlike the software engineer that is building a game and each component of that game depends on what the other agent is doing, then really that does need to wait. They can't be happening in parallel. So I think effectively 
both of these systems are saying the same thing. You can use multiple agents, you can use them in parallel, but where that parallelization falls down is anytime there's dependency on other tasks from producing the results from these two papers. And actually, to finish off, Anthropic do state their own weaknesses of this multi-agent system that relies on parallelization. They basically say, further, some domains that require agents to share the same context or involve many dependencies between agents are not a good fit for multi-agent systems today. For instance, most coding tasks involve fewer truly parallelizable tasks than research and LLM agents are not yet great at coordinating and delegating to other agents in real time. So we found multi-agent systems excel a valuable task that involve heavy parallelization, information that exceeds single context windows interfacing with numerous complex tools. So that is really the main thing you need to take away. Am I building something that has lots of dependencies? If so, try and build it all in one straight line in a sequential fashion. And any time where there's tasks that don't need to be dependent on others, that's when you can go parallel. So those are two of the biggest secrets behind these two papers. And if you want some more examples of me building some multi-agent systems, then stay tuned and subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be releasing some videos on exactly that shortly. Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care.